Hi everyone, Eurus McSparks back with you again, and let's keep talking about scripting and what we can do with it. So in the last lesson we covered about how to turn on and off lights in this, stop, in this uh, start light using a script. We learned about how you can use variables to shorten the names of some really long uh, strings of models. Let's see what other kind of properties, what other kind of effects we can do with this. So one thing I would like to add for my game is I want to make sure there's a barrier up at the beginning that prevents people from just starting off on the race. I want everyone to be able to start at the same time. So what I'm going to do that, I'm going to add a new part to our game. So click on part. Oop, it looks like it got into the model. Undo that. Make sure the model isn't selected. Select part. There we go. I'm just going to drag this into our game. Use the scale tool. Make it kind of big. And make sure that it stretches across the whole track. Snow car getting around this. And I'm going to make it kind of tall too. Make it even a little wider and past the uh, barrier of the fence. And I'm going to make sure that's anchored so that nothing can get through it. And so it's not going to be moving. One last thing, like we did earlier, a couple lessons ago, I'm going to change the transparency to something like, say like 0.5, so that people who start off on the track can see there's something in the way. Um, I can't draw, start driving, and it'll be clear once that's gone that they can start driving. Also, the light will turn green, so this will be two good indications. So how do we do this with our script? The first thing I want to do is I want to make sure this has a really nice name. Because by default, all parts all well, all parts are named part. Pretty much everything is named for what it is. If we actually look in the explorer, if we click on part here, it's actually the part we just added. And there may be lots of parts in our game, and I want to make sure that the script isn't confused. If there is multiple things that are named the same thing, you tell a script to do something to it. The script would be confused. It wouldn't know which which part to use. For instance, if I had just another part in my game, there's two parts here. If we said game.workspace.part, the script would just kind of pick one, and it wouldn't be up to us. So I want to make sure this is unique. So the name of part, I'm just going to right-click on it, rename, and call this barrier. I'm even going to be more specific. I'm going to call it start barrier. So I know that's at the start line. Who knows? Maybe I'll have other barriers elsewhere in the game. I'm going to go back to my script. And I'm going to make a variable for it. Say local. I'm going to call this start barrier. One thing about variables I didn't mention last time, you can name them pretty much anything you want. This doesn't have to be start barrier, it can be barrier start. Or it could just be barrier. It can be pretty much whatever you whatever you want, as long as it's not repeating the name of something else. So I'm just going to call this start barrier. And this is in the game. It's in the work space. I don't think it looks like it's in a model. It looks like I just left it out on its own in the workspace. So it's just directly underneath the workspace. And it's called Start barrier. Neat. So what do I want to do this barrier? Well, when the race starts, I want to make sure that the barrier becomes completely invisible, and I want to make sure that you can drive through it. So on our script, right down here is where the race will start, because the yellow light just turned off, green light just turned on. So let's use this opportunity to do something to our barrier. So starters, let's say start barrier, and let's make it completely invisible. And so notice here in the properties, we have our transparency. I'm going to say start barrier dot transparency equals one. That way when the game starts, or when the race starts, you can still see the barrier while the lights are going. Once the green light turns on though, that'll disappear. And then we want to make sure you can actually pass through it. Because just because you make a part invisible 
doesn't mean that it does it ceases to exist. It's still going to be there and it'll still block movement. So there's a property in all parts called can collide. That basically means whether something will stop when it hits it. So whether that's a car, a humanoid, like a ball that's thrown, if it says can collide, the thing that's hitting it will stop moving. It can't pass through it. But if we turn off can collide, they can go through. Now note, we don't want to just turn off can collide now, because by default that would mean we can just pass straight through this part. So I'm just going to make sure it starts off with can collide. But in the script, we're going to say start barrier dot can collide equals false. Just like what we saw earlier with the point lights, this can collide property will check box. This is something called a boolean. You'll hear this in programming quite often. And basically, again, this is just going to be true or false. Can it collide or can't it? It's going to be one or the other, and we always use the keywords true and false for this. So let's try it in our game. So I hit play solo. I'll hop in. Notice how the lights haven't gone. And I can't run through this. Oh, but the green light, it's gone. I can run through again. Neat. I'm going to click reset, get back to where we were. So let's take a look at some things that could catch you up when you're scripting. Some common mistakes, some common errors. As I was saying earlier, you're going to make some mistakes when you start scripting. Even the most veteran scripters will have errors pop up. And knowing how to deal with that, knowing how to recognize errors, knowing how to fix them, is really one of the key skills for a program or a game designer. So let's look at a couple things using the scripts that we already have. So what are some things that could happen? Well, as we saw in an earlier lesson, if you misspell something, that'll be a problem. So let's say that the start barrier that we had just added, let's say that we just had called it barrier. Let's say I didn't like start barrier, I just want to rename it barrier. Okay. Well, if we run the game, and we watch the light countdown, red, yellow, green, oh, looks like something happened. Attempt to index global start barrier, a nil value. And one really handy thing to note about the output is that if it creates an error, it'll actually tell you exactly where that error is. Notice how it says server script service dot script colon 19. Well, what that means is that in server script service, in the script that's in it, on the 19th line, something went wrong. So we can look, we'll open up that script. Here it is. Look at the 19th line. It says start barrier dot transparency equals one. Well, as we saw earlier, start barrier we haven't said what that is yet. We said what barrier is, but if you just say to do something to an arbitrary name, the code isn't gonna know what to do. So to fix this, we either need to change both of these lines, and say just barrier, or we need to make sure that we declare the variable correctly at the start. Similar to misspelling, capitalization matters as well. If we named our lights differently, if we said this was a red light, or actually even, let's say we are looking at this model in workspace, we saw start light, and we just called it start light. What would happen? Well, if we play our game, notice how we get a new, a new error. Start light is not a valid member of workspace. It's in script, server script, service, that script, line one. You notice here, game.workplace.startlight, it's trying to look in workspace for something specifically called startlight with a lowercase s, lowercase l, lowercase everything, really. We have a startlight, but as I was saying earlier, computers aren't usually going to be that smart. They're not going to go, 
Oh, the, you you left out a you left out the capital S, the capital L. No, no biggie. You all, I I think I know what you mean. Because it's very possible for us to have something called Starlight. And the program would think to look at this instead of that. So capitalization really matters. And we're just going to make sure this is start light. Again, fix that up. Another thing that's going to be, that can be a little bit unintuitive about variables and computers are spaces. And what do I mean by that? What I mean by putting spaces in the name of something. Let's say we wanted to reference start barrier right here. And we said game dot workspace. Let's say we said start barrier. Well, unfortunately, this wouldn't work. For starters, this doesn't even have a space in the name of the part. But in code, specifically when you're working in a scripting language like Lua, you can't put spaces in names. It's just not something that you're allowed to do. A space denotes you're trying to do something else. It's not part of the same instruction. And you'll even notice here the code is already kind of complaining. There's a red line here that's saying, hey, something, something's not up. Some, some, something's not quite right here. It's because there's a space in the name here. And remember how I said you can name variable names anything you want? That's, that's pretty much true. We could call, we don't have to call the start barrier. But one thing we can't do is we can't put a space in the name there. Let's see what happened. So I named my variable start space barrier, hit play solo, and everything seems okay. This error was from earlier. Got a red light, yellow light, green light, up, attempted to index global start barrier, a nil value. Well, notice how we didn't name it start, start space barrier. In general, you want to make sure that you're not putting any spaces in your variable names. On that note, something very specific to Roblox is that in general, I recommend avoiding putting spaces in the names of your objects. So if we wanted to rename this start barrier in the workspace, you're allowed to do that. There's nothing stopping you. But I would recommend against it. And let's see why. Until now, how had we been referring to objects in the workspace? Well, we had said game.workspace, not the object name. So intuitively, I would think, well, I'll just put a space there because it's named start barrier. Game.workspace.start barrier is how I see it over there. But if we tried to run this, it wouldn't work. There's an error because there's a script, there's a, a space in there. Now, there is a way to reference, pardon me, an object with a space in the name. But for starters, just for now, I recommend just steering clear, just be, just to avoid any kind of confusion without having to introduce any new methods or concepts. So for now, make sure that whatever you name, if you think you're going to be using it in a script, maybe if you don't think you're going to be using a script, you may end up trying that later, just stick to a single name. A really common convention is to start each word with a capital letter, just so you can see what, see a difference. If you prefer another way, another handy way, is to use something like an underscore, maybe a dash. Whatever makes sense to you, as long as it's only one word. Common convention is to just use capital letters. That's what I like to use, and that's what you'll find a lot of programmers end up doing. So those are just a few common errors that you'll find when you're coding. There is certainly lots more to discover. Um, you'll, I guarantee you will find one that we didn't meant to talk about today. There's simply not enough time to go over all of them. But remember, if something's written wrong in your script, the first place I would look is look in output. See what it prints out. See if there's something amiss here. That's always going to be your first step to diagnosing if something's wrong. If you see something that's unfamiliar, I recommend asking somebody. We have a scripting uh, section in our forums. It's a very good place to get help when you're writing your scripts if something's not going the right way. In general, though, remember, if you are asking someone for help for your script, 
make sure you include what the script is. You give you give the script itself. Say what you expect it to do, and then say what happens. That way people can help you. If you just go on saying, hey, my script doesn't work, no one's really going to be able to help you figure it out. But if you say, hey, I put in this script, I try to, you know, I try to make it invisible or try to change the collision on it. Just say, here are the lines of code that I used. This is an error that's popping up, and I'm not sure what this means. How can I fix this? Then you'll get a lot more positive response, and you'll be able, people will be able to help you. You'll be able to learn, and then you'll be able to help other people in the future when you see they have that problem. So we will go much more into scripting in future lessons, but I hope this gave you a nice, simple taste. Try, I recommend just trying to play around with this. There's no real way you can hurt your game with scripting. So try out, see what sorts of things you can change, see what sorts of properties you can manipulate. And when we come back next time, we'll be adding a whole bunch of new functionality to our game using scripting. So I hope you enjoyed. Thanks again for joining me. Eurus Mixed Sparks with Roblox. And remember, you make the game.